It's been a while since I have done an author highlights video, so I figured it was high time I did one. These are videos where I kind of tell you guys about one of my favorite authors, a little bit about them, and about their books, and where the best place is for you to start. So, today we are going to be talking about that wonderful classic children's fantasy author, Lloyd Alexander. Hello everyone, it is Samantha and I hope you guys are having a great day. It has been far too long since I have done an author highlights video so I figured I was overdue for doing one and today I am going to be talking about one of my favorite authors from my childhood and that is Lloyd Alexander. Fantastic, fantastic children's fantasy author. So Lloyd Alexander was born in 1924 and sadly passed away in 2005, but he had a pretty prolific and famous literary career. He's most well known for writing The Predian Chronicles, which features The Black Cauldron, which was actually turned into a film by Walt Disney in the 80s, I think. I discovered Lloyd Alexander when I was probably about 12 or 13 years old, and I immediately fell in love with his books. I, of course, started with The Predian Chronicles, but I have read most of his bibliography, and he is definitely a very, very fun author. He is, of course, most well known, as I said before, for the Predane Chronicles, which is a series of five books set in the land of Predane that primarily follow the young pig keeper Terran Wanderer, and he is eventually tasked and kind of has this fate to protect the land from the evil forces of the evil king Aron. So it's like a high fantasy story written for children. It definitely starts out kind of middle grade and then the last couple I would consider to be more YA, though this these are written before like middle grade and YA were really things. They were kind of just written for children. But they're very, very, very well done. They've actually won several awards, including the Newbery Award for his last book in the series, which is The High King. It's kind of loosely based upon Welsh mythology, so a lot of the words sound and the places sound very Welsh in origin. And I fell in love with the series. And I started to reread it last year. I need to finish it. I only reread the first book. But it's a lot of fun. It's definitely a quick read. It's a really, really good fantasy series, especially if you have young children in your life. And I really, really recommend it. It has a lot of fun characters. And I really don't think that the Disney film, The Black Cauldron, it really did it any justice. It ended up changing some kind of big things in the characters in big ways. I think that if you want to watch The Black Cauldron movie by Disney and you haven't yet, I would suggest watching it before you read the books. Because if you watch it after you read the books, like I did, then you'll just feel incredibly annoyed. But that's for another video. So anyway, his <laughs> this is his most famous series and it is The Predian Chronicles. And it consists of The Book of Three, The Black Cauldron, The Castle of Lear, Terran Wanderer and the High King. And as I said, this is definitely a very fun fantasy series. It has some very stereotypical fantasy tropes, but he does it in a fun way, and it's definitely made for children. They're quick reads, and I highly recommend them if you are have some young children in your life and you're wanting to get them into reading. I think these would be a good place for them to start. In addition to the pre dang Chronicles, he has a couple of other short stories that are set in this world as well. Those include Cole and His White Pig, The Truthful Harp, and The Family and Other Tales of pre dang He also has the Westmark Trilogy, which which includes Westmark, Kestrel, and the Baker Queen. He has the Vesper Holly series, which he wrote in the 80s, which includes the Illyrian Adventure, the El Dorado Adventure, the Drakenberg Adventure, the Jajera Adventure, the Philadelphia Adventure, and the Xandu Adventure. And he has a whole plethora of other standalone novels, which include the Arcadians and the Iron Rings, which are also made for more of a YA audience that I have also read, and as well as some other adult novels, which include Park Avenue Vet, Fifty Years in the Doghouse, Time Cat, The Remarkable Journeys of Jason and Gareth, The Marvelous Misadventures of Sebastian, The King's Fountain, The Four Donkeys, The Cat Who Wished to Be a Man, The Wizard in the Tree, Town Cats and Other Tales, The First Two Lies of Lucas Kasha, The Remarkable Journey of Prince Jen, the Fortune Tellers, The House Gobble Dean, Gypsy Ritzka, How the Cat Swallowed Thunder, The Goggin and the Boy, The Rope Trick, Dream of Jade, The Emperor's Cat, and The Golden Dream of Carlo. He also has several historical autobiographical novels which include In Let the Credit Go, My Five Tigers, Border Hawk, and Janine. And he also has various short story collections. So he was a pretty prolific author and he wrote from the 50s through the 80s. His most famous famous work, as I said before, of course, is his Chronicles of Pre-Dane. But I've also read his Westmark trilogy, which I really love. Westmark is another fantasy series by him that I really love and it's in more of his it's one of his more adult fantasy stories and he definitely pulls influence from French existentialist writers. The story takes place in this land of Westmark where the king has fallen ill with dementia and he's basically surrounded by evil counselors and relatives and they're kind of trying to keep him subdued while basically trying to run this country in tyranny. And then our main protagonist is Theo who is a young printer. It's in the same fantasy world with guns. So there's modern elements in addition to fantasy elements. So he's running a printing press and he ends up kind of getting involved in this movement to have this revolution and to protect people who would like to use their powers for ill. And it's really 
really well done. I definitely actually enjoyed this one a lot more than Chronicles of Predane. It was a dark fantasy story. I like how he took fantasy elements as well as more modern elements such as guns and things like this. And I think he tied them together really well in a way that I don't see very often in modern fantasy. He wrote these in the 80s and they are definitely well done. The other one that I love by him is The Arcadians, which is his kind of Greek mythology retelling. The story takes place in pre-classical Greece and it follows Lucian who is fleeing from these evil palace guards and trying to set out on a life of his own. And Lloyd Alexander ends up weaving a lot of Greek mythology and history into the story. It's funny and it's just a lot of fun. I actually learned a lot when I read this book. I learned a lot, quite a bit about Greek history and different things like scapegoat. There's a really funny thing with scapegoats, which if you've read the book, you'll know what I'm talking about. So it's a fun book. It's humorous and it definitely highlights Greek history in a really fun way. The next one I read by him that I really enjoyed was Iron Ring. The story features the young King Tamar who is the king of this fictional land of Sundry and he's very arrogant and selfish and he ends up agreeing to this game of dice with this word that I cannot pronounce I'm going to put it down here Jaya and he ends up playing a game of dice with this person they end up betting life against life and he tomorrow loses and he is Jaya places an iron ring around his finger and commands him to go to his palace to basically forfeit his life to him and of course he is enraged and he lunges across the table but he falls to the ground because the ring has power and he cannot attack him now. So he ends up falling and passing out and when he wakes up he finds that nobody recognizes or remembers this person Jaya coming to the palace. All he has is the evidence of the ring on his finger but he is honor bound to go to this person's castle so he sets out on a journey that ends up teaching him a lot about life and humility and it is really really well done. And this one Lloyd Alexander explores Indian culture and history, the caste system, Hindi, and a bunch of different elements taken from Indian culture and kind of explains Indian mythology for a younger audience. I really enjoyed the story. It was definitely, though it is kind of young adult middle grade, it definitely teaches a lot about how you should treat your fellow humans and a lot about Indian culture and history. And I really, really enjoyed this one. I should reread it, it's been forever. So this is another one by him that I really enjoyed. I still have a lot to read by him. So he has quite an extensive bibliography, but I really wanted to highlight him in this video because he is an excellent author, not only for children, but also for adults and definitely an author that I recommend checking out. I think that if you have a couple of places if you want to start with him, any of these series really would be a good place to start. If you're looking for more of a middle grade YA, then I suggest the Predane Chronicles. Though I do caution that Taryn is extremely annoying in the first two books. He doesn't really become incredibly likable until the last three, but the side characters are pretty great. And you also have the Westmark trilogy if you are looking for a slightly more adult fantasy story. And then of course the Iron Ring and the Arcadians if you're looking for more of a historical alternate retelling stories. So any of those places I think would be great places to start with Lloyd Alexander's work but I definitely think that he is an author that you should check out and one that is underappreciated. I mean he did a lot for the fantasy genre between the 50s and into the 90s when he was writing and he definitely deserves a lot of praise. He think he's created actually a lot quite a lot of excellent literature for children that teach a lot about the world around us in a really fun way so he's definitely an author to have on your radar and to check out in the future all right guys that was my author highlights video on Lloyd Alexander I hope that this helped you and kind of give you an idea of what kind of an author he is and where he should start I feel like perhaps I didn't highlight him as much as I could have so if there's any questions that you guys have for me please feel free to leave it down in the comment section I will try to answer them for you in any way that I can thank you guys so much for watching and until my next video happy reading bye